Hiya, my name is Michael Calvin. I just want to do a quick video to try and explain uh, the differences between imprinting um, and manning or taming um, and, the, and the effects that they have on, on a bird of prey and particularly with regard to raptor rehabilitation because some people seem to think that because a bird displays a calm disposition around people if it's undergone falconry rehabilitation for example that that, that, um, that tameness somehow has a lasting ill effect on the bird if it's released back to the wild and, and that's just simply not true so imprinting is a totally natural phenomenon um, in the wild they imprint onto their parents or in an every situation if they're being re reared by the parents they imprint onto the parents and the function of that is so that they recognize themselves as peregrines or whatever they may be and later in life they go on to try and breed with other peregrines and nothing else. So you can see that's got an important function. Um, that's a natural imprint. We can also mal imprint them as I like to call it because it's not natural on, onto people and we normally do that um, uh, for the purposes of captive breeding for example where um, the bird is reared by a person or people through that same critical development stage typically from one week all through to say to six, eight, ten or twelve weeks old depending on the species and they by being reared by people become imprinted onto people and the image that they get set into their head is that of people and they, be, they then believe they're a person and likewise they will seek out a person to breed with. The males will um, voluntarily give semen and the females will voluntarily stand for artificial insemination. Um, so, so that's imprinting in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that. There's, there's both natural and there's non-natural imprinting. Now where there is non-natural imprinting onto people, clearly if those birds were to be released back to the wild that could have a, an effect on them because even though they may be able to survive in the wild environment it's um, it's clear that they might not breed with their own kind some may it's not a hard and fast rule so I, i'm not going to speculate as to which species um, it would be more damaging for or which individuals but anything that, that might um, reduce the chances that they could breed in the wild should be avoided so imprinting babies that are destined to be released back to the wild is, in my opinion, not a good idea at all. Right, so what's the difference between imprinting and, and manning or taming? Okay, so first of all imprinting can only be done during that critical development stage up to about, I think, six or eight weeks, perhaps. Manning, taming, can be done, excuse her, at any age. So let's say they've been in the wild for a year, come into captivity, and the bird is of the type, you're not getting on my head, um, which lends itself to um, requiring falconry techniques, such as a peregrine falcon that's been injured or, or has lost all its condition, will require some weeks to get fit and strong again. For those type of birds, and perhaps some others, um, falconry techniques are a really good option if they're done well. Um, that bird that comes into care at three or six or, or 12 months old or, and it's had some free living in the wild separate from its parents and its family group, clearly the imprinting process has already occurred and is set and done by then. Um, and all we do is we use um, operant conditioning techniques to desensitize the bird to the new environment and we want to do that because um, we want the bird to be comfortable, happy, healthy uh, and, and without stress in this environment while they're undergoing rehabilitation. Why would you want them to be frightened? So we desensitize them through manning or, or taming and the effects of that are what you see here. This is a parent reared bird. This was reared on nest ledge in an aviary albeit but by its own parents. It is totally naturally imprinted and knows it's peregrine. And it will breed with peregrines. If I were to put it in the aviary with a male that's also used to that aviary, it will probably breed. But she's eight years old and she has never shown an inclination to breed with me. And in fact, when I put her in the aviary to molt each year, 
um, within two or three days I can't go in because she's frightened me again. So you can see that the effects of the manning um, and taming show themselves as a bird that's very calm, not scared of me at all, and that, I agree, to some people would look like that the bird's imprinted onto me. But it's not. Um, it's certainly imprinted, but onto its parents. And the this taming process is almost totally reversible in a very short amount of time. If this bird had been born in the wild and I was putting it back to the wild, she would go wild on me. Um, within two to three days I wouldn't be able to approach her um, closely anyway. Um, and certainly within a week to two weeks I wouldn't be able to get within 100 metres of her. She would go, go completely wild again. So the point is that I'm trying to make is that the imprinting process is set and done and we can't influence that. This taming that you see right here is not imprinting and it shouldn't be mixed up with that. This is totally reversible. This taming would have no ill effects on this bird whatsoever if I released her back to the wild right now. She didn't come from the wild so I'm not going to do that. So I hope that explains the difference between the two. There's an awful lot more to it. I could probably write a book on it. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'll try and keep this as short as possible. Um, but there you go, very, very tame, manned bird of prey that's naturally imprinted onto peregrine falcons and it knows it's peregrine and would have no trouble surviving in the wild and breeding with peregrines in the wild. No trouble whatsoever. Hope that explains it. Cheers. Are you going to put your head in there? <laughs>